Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining this session. Uh, we are going to address here accelerometer and cloud Kirinioc and how one can leverage them to build a dynamic and agnostic cloud monitoring billing solution. Uh, just an outline of the presentation that we're going to follow here today. Uh, we are going to start with an introduction with respect to cloud billing and how one can perform that and why one needs that in the different models that we have. And then we're going to showcase uh, the stack that we, the billing stack that we implemented with the OpenStack component, Silometer, Yoke, and Cloud Kitty. And then, of course, we're going to finish with the conclusion with some takeaways. Uh, just a brief introduction about, about myself. I'm a cloud consultant and enthusiast. Uh, I am a PMC and committed for the Apache Cloud Stack, which is, which is an alternative project for OpenStack. But nonetheless, I have been contributing for OpenStack since 2018. And I'm a core reviewer and the next project team leader for uh, Cloud Kitty. And the sponsor uh, that is driving all of the extensions we are doing in OpenStack, not just in the billing aspect of it, but you know, uh, even in Neutron and Keystone, we have some other extensions that we're implementing. The sponsor, the company that's sponsoring all of this work is, is everywhere. Uh, and they are one of the leading cloud providers in Switzerland we, with three, more than 3,000 business customers and over 20 years of experience delivering business critical platforms. Uh, and the interesting part is that because of the business they deliver, uh, they have some very specific requirements, which pushes us to uh, deploy a very complex and heterogeneous uh, cloud computing environment. So just to give you guys some idea, at the same time, and because of some different business requirements, they have running CloudStack, OpenStack, vCloud, and many other different systems that are used to build their cloud environment and to deliver their business. Uh, so just a brief introduction about the environments we are dealing with. They are heterogeneous fast, complex, and dynamic. And that means we need to handle different types of devices, different types of virtualization systems, different types of networking, storage systems, and of course, many, many different applications that are delivered to the users. Uh, and, and when it comes to cloud billing, in the context that we are working on right now, basically the cloud billing systems systems, they are the ones that are collecting uh, user data and these user data can come from storage, network, processing, VPN, users, and many other different resources that we have in the cloud environment. And after the collection, we have the data processing and rating phases. And these two steps, they need to scale easily. That's one of the requirements we have when implementing such billing systems. Uh, we should also be able to add uh, new metrics on the fly. And also, of course, support different pricing for, for uh, different consumptions of the same resources. And also uh, support data transformations, like whenever you are transforming somehow a uh, string data that we're capturing in some value or some of some sort. And also, of course, a change between different scales. So what are the options that we've, we found when we were looking for a, such a business, such a billing system to fit all of those requirements? Basically, we found billing portals and these portals, they would create an abstraction on top of the cloud computing orchestration system and they would connect all of the applications and perform data collection, rating, billing, invoicing, uh, onboard, client onboarding and user management and so on. And many other different features, you know, like uh, some predictive analysis of the uh, environment, some forecasting for the resource consumption and so on. Uh, after analyzing these uh, different systems, why didn't the client that we are uh, working with adopted the cloud portal system? Well, basically because those are our normally proprietary solutions. At least we did not find any good uh, open source solution out there. 
and they are not easily customizable. And so, you know, we need to add new metrics on the fly. We don't actually, when we started two years ago, we didn't know all of the metrics that we are using today. So therefore the, the proprietary systems, they did not feel that easy to extend and to customize. And when we say customization here, we're not talking about, you know, changing icons and CSS and so on. We are actually talking about the type of metric that the system monitors, uh, stores, and then, you know, use, uses for billing. And also, you know, whenever integrating a new uh, system or a new device or a new application, uh, of course, some of them, they have, a, they support a variety of appli different application systems, but any, nonetheless, whenever we would need to uh, add a new one, for instance, we would need to raise a ticket to discuss, you know, how this implementation would be executed and the cost and so on. So they, they, that would make them a little bit slower to, to, to support new metrics and new integrations that they need. Uh, one alternative to cloud portals is something called monetary quota. And that's a feature that I have seen applied only so far, at least only on Apache cloud stack. Uh, the idea is that you limit the use like quota, you limit the use of computing resources for a user based on a monetary value. So instead of limiting the amount of virtual machines, for instance, that the user can deploy, you actually assign the user a value, like a credit, and then the user can consume that credit by using and allocating virtual machines. And each one of the, the resource that the user allocates has somehow a monetary value that's attached to it. And well, for us, for this specific client that did not work, because uh, the model, this type of model is intended for private cloud use. Uh, and because the client is actually a public cloud model and we need to something to mimic the pay as you go, uh, which is actually the, the public cloud model that would not fit. And also, you know, OpenStack did not have uh, this uh, implementation built in, as far as I know, at least. Uh, and, and last, the, the last model that we were, uh, discussing and we evaluated is the idea of rating. So the rating is just about, you know, assigning uh, a monetary value, a price for uh, for, a cons for the consumption of a computing resource or a cloud computing resource uh, by a client and in a given time. And then these applications, they would normally generate reports, you know, explain, showing the, the amount of resource that was consumed and the, the monetary value for those resources that the user consume. Uh, that, that's the model we adopted and it fits nicely in the public cloud model, the pay-as-you-go model. And OpenStack has a, cloud key, has a component called, uh, called Cloud Kitty, which is a rating as a SAS module. So it fits nicely the requirements we were working with. The, the chain that we implemented, of course, here we are, for instance, hiding the parts that after Cloud Kitty, we have like an ERP, another system of the company that's uh, capture, uh, getting these uh, resources that were rated, that, that, were, that had a monetary value assigned to them, and then, you know, generate the invoicing and send to the client. Uh, but basically we have the cloud environment with all of the different resources that one needs, needs to handle, like identities, user connections, object storage, computing resources, and so on. All of those are monitored by, in different systems as well. For instance, vCloud is a different uh, cloud computing orchestration than OpenStack. Uh, and then we have SiloMeter monitoring, gathering data there and persisting in Yoki. And after the data is persisted in Yoki, it's consumed by Cloud Kitty so we can rate it, so we can assign a monitor value to it. That's a very simple stack. All of the components, they are uh, open source, which is interesting and we can extend quite easily. Of course, we implemented this, but you know, this is not just what we have in production because as soon as we started implementing it, we found some limitations. So for instance, SiloMeter. SiloMeter was not able to create new metrics on the fly. All of the metrics, that SiloMeter had built in, they were hard coded, meaning there is a Python code that is executed and that collects and handles the metric. 
And that was a problem because we wanted to be able to generate new metrics, meaning collect uh, data from different APIs and from new APIs in runtime. And that was not possible when we started working with Silometer. So to overcome that, we implement, we created a new subsystem, a new feature in, in Silometer. Uh, which is called dynamic posters. Basically, the idea is that one can define the posters, the agents gathering data uh, in Silometer via YAML. So basically, you declare the open the OpenStack API that you want to call, the parameters you want to retrieve, and how you want to process them, and then you store them uh, in the backend. And in our case, the backend is in our key. Uh, so that's the first extension we did. And then we noticed that, okay, we want to monitor not just OpenStack resource. As I, as, I, as I explained to you guys at the beginning, the sponsor has, you know, a very heterogeneous called environment, which means that we need to monitor different, we need to be able to monitor different systems at the same time. And ideally with the same uh, billing pipeline that we were building. So we extended the dynamic posters in Silometer that we created even further meaning we enabled the dynamic posters to monitor any API that we want, as long as they, they, they expose a JSON format. Uh, I, I put an asterisk here in, the, in this implementation because uh, Silometer had an integration with the Rados Gateway before with S3 protocol. But uh, as the, the, the hard-coded poster, it was something, you know, written in Python, you could not actually easily extend. And when I say easily extend here, I'm talking about, you know, the operators, because somebody from the operating, that's operating this whole infrastructure, they might not be that familiar with Python or might not be that familiar to extend this, high, this type of modules. Therefore, for them, it's way easier to configure a new poster that's what we introduced with, the, with a dynamic poster using YAML, for instance, then, it, then coding the poster with Python. Uh, and by delivering these two implementations, we are able to monitor basically any type of API that responds JSON with, uh, with Silometer right now, even if the API is not an OpenStack. And, you know, if the API is, requires credentials, requires authentication, for instance, Silometer has a built-in integration with, with Barbican that we also introduced. So uh, all of the credentials are safely stored in Barbican and retrieved by Silometer and then use it to connect to the system that we are monitoring. So it, it's a quite solid and secure monitoring chain that we uh, extended Silometer to have and to support. Uh, after Stylometer, we started noticing uh, because we put the system in production and then you know, everything was nice until it was not. So, for instance, we started noticing that in Oki, we was not returning the right version for the attributes of the monitor, the results. Uh, by right version of the attribute here, I mean, for instance, uh, the flavor of a virtual machine, it is stored in Oki as an attribute. If the flavor changes uh, in the middle of the month, for instance, and if we do a reprocessing for that month, uh, Inoki was always returning the latest metadata that was stored there. And that's a problem because then instead of using the, 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 the correct value for the rating, uh, we were using the wrong one, the wrong information to define the price. So we had to fix that for Inoki as well. And after fixing that, and of course, we still continued moving on and with the, run, the system up and running, we started noticing some slowdowns in Yaki and that was happening because of the, the database schema that was implemented to it. So we had to, implement, to improve and to optimize some of the Yaki's database schema as well uh, to support the, the growing data sets that we have. And Last but not least, we also uh, extended called Kitty. First, we needed to introduce the support to the rate XX uh, aggregation methods in, in, our, in called Kitty because called Kitty was not properly using them. So the rate XX, these are some options in Yaki that allows you to calculate the rate between two, diff, two, two data points in time. Uh, and Cloud Kitty was not actually executing that uh, use of the API properly when these aggregation methods were being used. Then we fixed that as well. 
and last but not least, the usage reports. Uh, Cloud Kitty was had a fixed usage report model, meaning it would only return the resource ID uh, quantity of the resource that was used in hours and then the price. But for our use case, we wanted to be able to retrieve, for instance, the metadata, the attributes that are stored there in Cloud Kitty as well. So we extended this API to allow uh, integrators and other people consuming the Cloud Kit API to retrieve the metadata that, that is stored to it as well. So whenever you retrieve, uh, for us, whenever we are retrieving data from Cloud Kit, we are able to retrieve not just the price and the quantity, but also the metadata attached to that, to those uh, rating information. And then we can, you know, generate more meaningful reports there. Uh, in just in conclusion, we were able to build a very solid and open source billing pipeline uh, with silo metering in Oaken called Kitty. And that's interesting because we are able to monitor and build all of the cloud resources. So it's not just about open stack resources, but also everything else that we have in the cloud environment and that's supported by this pipeline. Uh, we have a limitation right now uh, that's worth mentioning. Uh, the extensions that we did in SiloMeter, they are not able to, to monitor XML APIs. So for instance, the vCloud that we have right now, uh, the data is captured by some scripts and then persisted in Yoki. But after the data is in Yoki, Cloud Kitties rates them as we rate any other resources. So that's one of the last extensions that are uh, missing in the dynamic poster subsystem that we introduced in SiloMeter. And this setup is stable and it has been and solid and it has been running for over two years already. And we keep improving and working with it. And uh, not all of the implementation, but most of them that we did, they are already in the upstream and they were already released. For instance, SiloMeter, all of the implementations we did in SiloMeter so far, they were already released in Victoria release of OpenStack. Uh, in Yoki, some of the pull requests were merged, some of them are still open. We do know that Yoki is in like a gray area right now. It's not part of OpenStack. It's not a component from OpenStack, but it's quite heavily used. And there is a movement to somehow bring this type of system back to the community. Uh, but so far, when, when we fix it, uh, those limitations, we propose uh, the fixes back to the Yoki project in GitHub. And in Cloud Kitty, there is, I think, one extra pair pull request, merge request that's still open there, but you know, it's it's coming at least probably in Wallaby release. And for the future, that's, uh, we are only missing one thing, one step uh, to be able to build a full blown cloud portal with open source. And that's what we are working on right now. So basically we have developed a, a customer onboarding and management portal that enables us, you know, to do the user onboarding, to manage the users and to integrate different systems in the, in the, in the, in the cloud environment uh, and to provide that unified, uh, uh, unified view of the cloud computing environment for the end user. Uh, we are right now testing and validating it internally and the system will be open sourced in the coming months. And that's basically all of my presentation. Thank you guys for watching it. And if you have any further inquiries, questions, uh, you can just uh, ping me and send me an email in my private mail account and I'll be happy to reply to you back. Thank you, bye.